Hello again, everybody. Pastor Brian here. Just wanted to bring you another word of encouragement, another promise from God's Word to us today. I've uh, been reading in the little tiny book in the Old Testament of Habakkuk. There's some wonderful, wonderful uh, things in this book that can really be of an encouragement to us. And I'd like to draw your attention to chapter 2, the first four verses of chapter 2. And Habakkuk is really dealing with this issue of waiting on God, waiting for God to, you know, show up, waiting for God to come through with the promises that he's made to us. Waiting uh, is something that I don't think very many of us enjoy doing. I don't know that it even comes easily. It tries our patience at times. But, but waiting puts everything into perspective. Uh, we wait at a red light because there are other people that have the right to go and we have to wait. Uh, if we disregarded the, the command to wait at a red light, all sorts of chaos could happen, of course. And so <clears throat> we have this, this uh, statement of God that says, I want you to wait. I want you to wait. And that's what these four verses are about. And he begins by saying, uh, the, this person has come before God with frustration and complaints and, and they ask this question, what's God going to say to my questions? I'm braced for the worst. I mean, how often is that a, a good description of us that we pray and yet at times we expect the worst. Yeah. Maybe it's because we uh, remember our past and we think God's going to just treat us based on our past rather than his love for us. But he says, I'm braced for the worst, but I'm going to climb to the lookout tower. I'm going to scan the horizon and I'll wait to see what God says, how, how he will answer my complaint. Again, how many of us have just really kind of complained to God. I know that I've been guilty of it, especially when I've had to wait. Uh, wait longer than what I felt was a fair amount of waiting time. And so <clears throat> the uh, Habakkuk then responds with God's answer here. And verse 2 says, and then God answered. And then he said, write this and, and, and write what you see, but write it out in big block letters. Do you ever get texts from somebody and they want to emphasize something, they put it in block letters, capital letters, and, and, and it says, write it in big block letters so that it can be read even on the run. I mean, isn't that a good description of our lives? God tells us to wait, but we're always in a hurry. That's kind of a paradox, isn't it? And God says, write this in big block letters so even when you're on the run, you can read it. And this is the revelation or the vision witness, vision message. Write this vision message uh, is a witness. And it's a witness pointing to what is coming. This is what God's saying. This, this witness, this vision, this revelation is a witness to what is coming. And then he talks about what kind of is going on in our hearts. And it says, it aches for the coming. And isn't that the case with many of us? What we believe God has promised to us, we've been waiting for, it hasn't yet arrived. There's an ache in our hearts for that to come. And we can hardly wait. We can hardly wait. At times I think we're just like our little children when we say, just wait a minute, just be patient and Five seconds later, they're tugging on our pants leg again. Mommy, Daddy, Grandpa, can you take me to here? Can you give me this? Can you give me that? Just wait a minute. And five seconds later, they're tugging on our pants leg again. They're our, trying to get our attention. And this is, this is what God is saying to us. Uh, it, it aches for the coming. It can hardly wait. We can hardly wait at times. But, he says, this revelation, this thing that I'm declaring to you, it doesn't lie. It seems slow in coming, but wait. It seems slow in coming, <clears throat> but wait. It's on the way, and it will come. 
on the right time. It will come right on time. It'll come on time. It doesn't feel that way to us, does it? But God's timing is perfect. Then he gives a little comparison here. He says, look at that man very bloated by self-importance, self-confidence, full of himself, but soul empty. But the person in right standing before God through loyal and steady believing is fully alive. He is really, really alive. So there is a formation that happens in us when we are waiting on God, when we are waiting patiently for the Lord. There is a development that happens within us. There is a, uh, a coming, uh, a development that comes within us that brings fullness to us, fully alive to us as we wait upon the Lord because our faith is being tested. Our patience is being endured. We're, we're enduring in patience. And the person in right standing before God, through loyal and steady believing. But what a great description. Through loyal and steady believing. May that be said of you and I today. That you and I are loyal, steady believing people, even in our waiting, even when it feels as though our patience is running a little thin, that we will take captive our thoughts, we will not live by our emotions, that we will take captive our thoughts and go back to this wonderful tr truth that God is trustworthy. God is trustworthy. And he says that in this uh, loyal faith-filled, believing, steady believing that you and I will become fully alive. And that's what God wants for us. He wants us to be fully alive. And it sounds to me like one of the only ways to get fully alive is to have to wait on the Lord. So be encouraged today. Be encouraged today that God is saying this to you. Write this out in big block letters. Just remember that what he said to you will come to pass. What he has said, he will do. But he is also concerned about not just bringing to pass what he said he will do, but he's also concerned that what will happen in us is that we will become fully alive in our spirits, in our relationship with him. So I hope you're encouraged today. God will come through. God will come through. But allow yourself to become fully alive by this incredible process, albeit frustrating at times, waiting, waiting on God, waiting for God. But you know what? When we arrive at eternity's shore, when we arrive at the end, when we, when we receive that thing that God has promised, there will be so many other great things that come along with just what he promised. And so I encourage you today, my friends, that wait on the Lord, don't give up, and allow yourself to become fully alive in all that God has for you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Remember again Habakkuk 2, 1 through 4. It's a wonderful portion of scripture to meditate on. Take care. Be safe. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.